In 25 major cities across the U.S., officials have cut or proposed funding cuts to the police budgets. Here in San Diego, Mayor Gloria's budget cuts for the upcoming year will actually reduce staff over the duration of the budget. However, his budget calls for more than $2.5 million for a private security detail for the mayor himself. Here now to talk more about these findings is Chairman of Reform California, Carl DeMaio. Carl, good to see you tonight. Hey, uh, good to see you too. It looks like uh, it's police protection for them, but not for us. That's the double standard, the hypocrisy that we're seeing from these Democrat politicians talking about defunding the police mm -hmm. who trash our police officers and call them racists and brutes, but then turn around and expect uh, to have concierge service from our uh, police officers for private uh, protection for the members of the city council and the mayor. It's a slap in the face. And I'm not saying we should discontinue that protection, but I think we really need uh, to uh, uh, examine whether or not these uh, uh, current politicians are being um, uh, uh, forthright and, and genuine. Uh, on their calls for defunding the police. Yeah, the story's actually making national headlines. I heard from all sorts of folks across the nation saying, what's going on in San Diego? Your, your mayor's proposing budget cuts, sort of, because it's not necessarily cutting their pay. It's cutting the opportunity for overtime and staffing in the police budget. But then he's beefed up the budget for his personal details. So some are feeling that boils down to, well, we'll protect our, our elected officials, but but not our communities. Right, so here are the actual numbers. The mayor and the city council assigned 12, 12 police officers full-time to guard them uh, against what? Uh, no, one's, no one knows who Todd Gloria is or the members of the city council. Uh, trust me, I've been on the city council. Uh, it's not like you have a, a really risky job, not like our police officers do when they actually go out in the community. There's much more difficult jobs that require protection but 12 full-time police officers at a cost of $2.6 million per year to taxpayers. Now, while they're all out there talking about defunding police and how police officers are racist and police officers are brutes, they expect these 12 police officers to cater to their ever whim, uh, to sit uh, uh, in uh, hot cars, to take them uh, and drive them around town. Uh, Todd Gloria gets a, a, a fully taxpayer-funded car driven by those police officers. Uh, they open the doors for him. They carry his bags. Uh, they are, they're there at his beck and call. They're with him when he's at home. Uh, it really is much ado about nothing. I don't mind pr for providing protection for people who are under legitimate threat, but this is overboard. It, it really is creating a privileged class. So Todd Gloria has proposed a $4 uh, million cut in overtime, and that reduces staff availability of police officers in the community. So he gets his detail fully staffed, but in the community, he's cutting back on the overtime, which means less police officers are available to respond to 911 calls and to do the patrols. And what does it say to the department as a whole? I mean, it's tough enough to live on a police officer's salary in San Diego alone. So many of them, just like teachers and firefighters and many other folks, uh, they rely on that potential for overtime to make ends meet. But knowing that that's going to get cut, wh what does that mean for trying to even staff our department? Well, there's a more insidious uh, factor here, and that is when you call police officers racists, when you say that they're brutes, when you uh, basically say that uh, their use of force is, is to be presumed to be inappropriate or racist in, in inherently, uh, you are basically driving good people, good men and women off the police force. No one wants to join the police force. Uh, many of the ones that are on there are looking forward to retirement. They're taking early retirements, they're quitting. They're going to other states that, that where their politicians are, are more supportive and their communities are more supportive. And this creates a very dangerous environment in San Diego. But you know who doesn't get put at danger? You guessed it, the politicians that are creating this unsafe environment. They are gonna make sure that the, the last uh, police officer shifts that will be canceled uh, will be the, the mayor and the, the city councils. That we could literally have no police patrolling the streets, but you can damn well bet that they'll make sure that their police details are fully staffed and that they're protected 
that's again the double standard that we have to deal with in, um, in, in amongst these these progressive Democrat politicians. Last year, by the way, just just to give an example, last year Chris Ward, District Three City Council member, he's now uh, a state assembly member, publicly attacked police during the George Floyd uh, flare up, called for defunding the police, said he didn't trust the police. But then when he got threats at his home, he expected to have those police officers sitting outside <laughs> his house protecting him. It's just hip- hypocritical. Uh, if you don't value these men and women, if you really think that they're brutes and thugs, why do you assign them to be uh, around you at every every moment uh, at your beck and call? Yeah, it's a very interesting uh, case. It's a very interesting topic of discussion. Like I said, it's one being had across the nation right now with San Diego in the forefront. Carl DeMaio, really appreciate your time tonight and your insight. Thanks, Ginger. All right.